So I was able to translate the program I used on the TIs for the speed test comparison uh, to these uh, HPs that I have. So uh, we can take a look at how these compare to each other. So I have um, the badges missing, but this is the 11C. This is a 15C, this is one of the ones from the 80s, so it's not the LE or the CE. Uh, 1985, it looks like. Uh, I have a 32S, a 48G+, 50G, and the Prime. And this one is a, it's a G1, so it's the fast Prime, but it's not the super fast Prime, which was the G2, I believe. <clears throat> And these three here, the 32S and the, uh, the Voyager series, they use keystroke entry. 48 and 50 use RPL as a language, and then this one uses PPL. So the programs are all written slightly different, but the, uh, the functionality of them is pretty much the same. So this is the one that I worked on first. Um, there's some weird stuff that tripped me up, like this equal... Uh, colon equals syntax to assign values that was a little weird um, you can see here this ticks keyword because the um, the three graphing models I have here uh, have internal clocks so for the prime ticks keeps track of the milliseconds in, of the program so we take a stamp at the start and then one at the end. We subtract them from each other. And then uh, we know how many uh, milliseconds the program had been running at that point. So um, one of the other things here is we can see the count equals two to start. And this is when I first experienced the, uh, the issue where the actual internal loop that um, test factors against the uh, the number um, where the first run of the loop on the number three didn't go because it tested the range before executing the loop so when the when the number it's checking is three the range is going to be because it checks the square root um, the range will be from two to one and it just doesn't execute the first loop so it never actually checks three. So the count is got to start at two because of that. And also because we don't check two itself. Um, yeah. And then you can see here, there's just a little bit of uh, stuff to set up because it checks in milliseconds and I'm just going, you know, accurate to about uh, within a couple of seconds. Um, so we divide the milliseconds by a thousand that gets us seconds and then I just truncate that so I don't round it It's not that accurate and Doesn't really I'm not too concerned with that level of accuracy um, But yeah, that's the uh, the PPL program uh, RPN or RPL sorry uh, gave me a lot of trouble uh, I initially tried to do it with local variables and I just could not figure out the local variables work in a very specific way that um, I didn't really grasp. I kind of understand it now, but um, I think that was a mistake. So I ended up rebuilding it with global var variables and it worked right away. So probably should have done that from the start. Uh, global variables do run a bit slower than local. Um, that's one of the first things they tell you in the manual, which is why I tried it with local. But yeah, so it is what it is. It's running on global variables. 48G plus and the 50G are running the same thing. The only other thing on this uh, you can see is the... A um, little bit of work here at the end. So we still have that ticks keyword, but RPL records ticks in binary. So uh, we have to have this little binary to real conversion. And then we divide that by 8192. And that gets us uh, like a readable number. 
in um, in seconds. So uh, that's actually included in the advanced user guide, which is handy because I would have never figured that out myself. <laughs> um, and I think the only other thing here is, yeah, we can see that the count starts at one. So it does run the first loop and then checks for range after the loop executes. Um, but yeah, that's the RP, uh, RPL version. You can see it there. And that calculator has some fun beeps. Um, the keystroke program was actually provided by Golden Phoenix over on Calcverse. And I think they might be on YouTube, but yeah, thank you to them. So they were pretty, pretty rapid in programming the 15C version. And unfortunately you can see there's a little speck under the, the screen here. Um, always kind of bothers you when you're using this, but they're, they're a really avid 15C user. So they were very excited to, to work up a translation for that. The 15C, um, if we bring this up and we backstep, uh, we can see this program is 43 lines long when entered. And the 32S runs the identical program. The only difference is um, you can see here like it enters an, uh, a number value as a single line versus the older ones, which each individual keystroke is a line. And I think, uh, oh yeah, it doesn't actually give us line numbers on this because of how the labeling works. But yeah, it's, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, the 11C is slightly different um, because, because the way the index registers work on this one versus the 15, the 15 is quite a bit more dynamic with the indexing. Um, I've had to rewrite it and add a bunch of lines that manually swap um, the registers in and out of each other uh, at key moments. Um, so you can see it's 53 lines long on this one. Uh, yeah, 53 lines long. So, and silly me on the first go of the recording, I actually forgot to show the program that Golden Phoenix wrote for the 15C. So here I have it written out. I got it kind of spaced out into some blocks. Well, you can see the, um, the first couple of lines are setting up the um, index count. So uh, if you're not familiar, basically the way the calculator uses this number is the integer portion is the starting count of the loop. So in this case, we're starting at three. We're going up to 999, 999. And then the last two numbers are the step value. So from three to 999, and it increases by two every time. So three, five, seven, we're only testing the odd numbers. Um, then we're starting the count at one because we test at the end of our loop. So we don't need to count in the same way like we did on the HP Prime or some of the TIs. And then you can see this I thought was pretty uh, brilliant. Uh, maybe it is perfectly straightforward if you work with keystroke a lot, but I thought this was pretty cool. The way they derive the internal um, index number for the, uh, the factor testing loop, the actual prime verification loop. The way they derive it from this number here by dividing by 1000 then adding two to the front of that i thought that was pretty good um, we have this next section here uh, label one which just actually does the uh, the factor test to see if it's composite or not and then our um, x equals zero 
ISG, which is the uh, indexing. So this is where we actually go up in the count up in the loops. And then um, the last couple lines, if we're done with um, the, the main loop, then we recall zero, which is the, uh, the register we're using to store the count number. And then we end the program here. And you can see I've slightly adapted it for the 11C. Um, it's really just needs to, there's this third label bit. So anytime there was something where a storage register one or I in the 15C program was being addressed, I just need to make sure that the numbers were, the, the current values were updated and then swapped into the I register because the 11C can only index the I register, not any register it chooses. So that's the only changes I really had to make. I'm not sure if I did it optimally or not, but uh, that's what I came up with. So uh, that's that. And I guess we can just jump back into where I was in the, uh, the first time recording. Um, yeah, just uh, I forgot to do it with the um, with the TI one, but just to give a quick guess, I mean, at how these are going to compare, I would say the two Voyagers are going to be the slowest um, because I've had to add more program lines on the eleven. I would say that's going to be slower, but uh, than the fifteen, if they were running the identical program then I would think these would be within a couple of seconds of each other. The 32S, I think, would be the next slowest because it's, uh, what is this, 1988 or something. Um, uh, this one's from 1988, so I don't know when they actually started that series. But yeah, I would think pretty much oldest to newest is how I would arrange them or guess at them so then that then i would say the 48g is probably going to be slower than the 50 because uh, i think this is substantially faster at the clock speed i think this one runs at like 75 megahertz there's something about you able to overclock them i didn't do anything like that um and then i think the prime is going to be silly fast uh, we'll see how that turns out. I mean, just in testing, it was silly fast, so I don't think anything's going to compare to that. But, yeah, that would be my guess. Just oldest to newest um, would be slowest to fastest. And, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, um, I'm not going to record, or I'm not going to include any of the footage. The last time in the TI video, uh, I just appended the video with... Uh, the footage of the calculators running again these ones have internal clocks so i'll just work off of that uh, these ones i'll have to record but i suspect these are going to go for a long time so i'm going to have to do that with like my webcam or something on my computer and yeah i'm not gonna uh I'm not gonna include you know a couple of hours worth of footage or something uh, that's probably going to be unnecessary but yeah let's go test them out and then we'll see what the results are like so i've gone through and tested everything and i've done three passes again which ended up taking basically all day <laughs> and you can see i've got a little whiteboard with the uh, the ti results on here so we can see how everything stacks up as we go um you know, with these little magnet things. This is basically like the Top Gear leaderboards, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, some surprising results. Again, just like with the TIs, uh, some stuff I didn't uh, expect. So, yeah, without further ado, um, <clears throat> the slowest of the HPs, I think... Probably everyone can guess this one, but with a time of um, 
one hour, 55 minutes, and 55 seconds on average across the three runs is the 11C. So we put that down here. Um, yeah, I had to do that three times. That was a while. Um, next slowest time, one hour, 43 minutes, and 20 seconds, the 15C. And then, oh, the first, uh, Surprising result, I would say. The HP 32S with six minutes. So, um, six minutes and one second. So that's going to go in here. And I would say that's surprising, to me anyway, because our next result is six minutes. And that is the 50 G so I did not expect that at all because that means the 48 G plus was actually faster at four minutes and 25 seconds so that's going to slot in here um, right in here so the 48G, um, faster than the 92, but slower than the 92 plus, and slower than the 92 plus module upgrade. And uh, I probably no surprises here. Um, the HP Prime uh, shows zero seconds, so somewhere under a minute, because remember, um, I just truncate, I don't round the, uh, the final value. Um, so less than a minute or less than a second, sorry, um, is the HP prime. So maybe we put that all the way at the top. I don't think that's going to get bumped down probably ever, maybe. Um, yeah. So, I mean, these HPs that I'm testing are older than a lot of the TIs, although the 50G, is that was a surprising result. And the other thing I noticed was the 48G+. Plus. Um, each time I ran the program, it would take one second longer. And so I actually ran that. I took, I took the average from the first three results, but I ran it about eight times. And it would take about a second longer until it topped out... Um, well, four or five seconds slower than the uh, the first pass I did. And I ended up reading that this series of processors um, may or may not be susceptible to the temperature. So I figure maybe as, as it heated up from running uh, more and more, it just started slowing down. Um, that's on Wikipedia. I don't know how valid that claim is but it seems like that may have been the case here but like i said i took the average from the first three runs so that was when i was running cold i guess but uh yeah anyway those are the results that i got um again some surprises com just like with the ti's some stuff that i wouldn't have expected the uh, the 50g here only beats the 32s by a second <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for watching and um yeah i think i've got at least one more of these because i got a bunch of random miscellaneous stuff to to try it out on so we'll see how those go as well um but yeah thank you again